Hi, I'm Ed from Cyvex, and this is another episode of Cyvex Says, and today we're talking about turbos. Um, everyone loves turbos. Who doesn't love a turbo? Um, bigger the better, right? Well, yeah, maybe not. So this episode is talking about choosing the right size turbo for your engine. Um, and this is a particularly important subject. Bigger isn't always better. It looks great on turb uh, on it looks great on paper. If you pick up a turbo, it's going to say do a thousand horsepower, but it's it's never going to work on a one liter engine, right? Pretty much, unless you're doing something crazy. Anyway, so you need to look at realistically what it is you want from an engine, um, how much power, what the application is. There is no point picking a turbo that only just about starts working as you hit a rev limiter. Obviously, the turbo is too big. Um, and in actual fact, even if it did make full power right near the rev limiter, but nothing beneath, then what you're looking at is the area under the curve, under your power curve, would be so small that the actual usable power available to you would make you slower than a car, maybe even with half the horsepower. So there's a few things to look at. First of all, making sure that your engine can produce enough airflow to get the turbo spooling and producing boost. Um, the opposite end of the scale is choosing a turbo that's not such that it poses a restriction on the engine and prevents airflow from flowing through the engine, through the turbo um, and causing restriction at the opposite end. So there's a balance to be had. These days, quite honestly, most people seem to in many cases just pick a turbo because their friend said this is a great turbo it works on my car and that can kind of get you close um, simply because there's other people with experience out there that allows you to uh, gain from their experience and use it as yours is it the best way probably not um, there are tools available for you now from people like garrett which allow you to input variables relating to your size of engine, your RPM operating range and the amount of power that you want to produce and then by choosing a range of turbos you can actually have a look at the data to see whether this engine would be suitable, uh, sorry, whether this turbo would be suitable for you. Um, these are tools which if you spend a short amount of time on will actually give you a much greater chance of success of picking a turbo. There are other factors that also come into play however. Uh, it can be, for example, the manifold design you have. It can be the turbo um, uh, exhaust downpipe and other things after the turbo. You have to remember that turbos work by creating pressure by using exhaust energy. Um, this exhaust energy isn't free. If you're producing one bar of boost, there'll be quite likely up to, in, depending on what RPM, um, one bar, maybe even one and a half bar of back pressure between the cylinder head exhaust and the inlet to the turbo. Obviously, if you have back pressure going into your engine, the pistons are coming up, they will feel the resistance of this back pressure and it will try to get, it will cause a situation whereby you can have exhaust not wanting to leave the engine if obviously you have a greater exhaust pressure than you do boost pressure. It's a bit more complicated than that, but it's not a situation you want to be in. And you'll see this happening if on um, a, a car you're tuning, where you can't get much ignition timing into it um, and power starts falling off quite quickly. Uh, you'll notice that potentially this is related due to turbine inlet pressure issues. And this can be measured. Uh, one of my new favorite sensors that we've been using, I have a few of the high power drag cars and track cars that I work on, is a, a turbine inlet pressure sensor. By comparing manifold pressure versus turbine pressure, you can see that you have the balance right. If you're, you pull a dyno graph or if you're on a racetrack and your manifold pressure is going up and then at high RPM you see your turbine pressure going up higher, then you know you're in a problem and you probably have a turbo or exhaust system or something on that hot side of the engine causing a restriction. Um, the ideal scenario to be in is to have a correctly sized turbo with the turbo producing more pressure than the actual back pressure that you see. 
Uh, in this case, it's kind of like a win-win. You have a pressure differential across the engine in the right direction, encouraging air to go through it, and this will be a sweet spot where you can produce some major power. Um, and we'll see this on some of the drag cars I work with where we're producing sort of 1,300 horsepower uh, using pretty big turbos, and we're still in a sweet spot with manifold pressure versus turbine inlet pressure. So in a roundabout way, use the tools available to you. Um, Garrett produced some of these on their website. Other manufacturers, I'm sure, do the same. Um, it allows you to enter your engine data. By using this engine data and, and looking at different turbo options, you'll find something that's suitable for you. Remember that you want to go for the broadest range of power possible and ideally match that to the conditions in which you're going to be using the car. So this will include things like gearbox ratios. Um, and by getting all of this together, you'll be engineering a turbo solution for your car that won't be guesswork. Um, obviously, by using an ECU like a Cyvex, you can monitor turbine inlet pressure along um, uh, with manifold pressure. Ah, and one other thing I haven't mentioned that's useful to, that's very, very useful, is a turbine uh, speed sensor. So obviously, turbos have an operating range. Um, this comes into play with back pressure. Um, is the back pressure being caused because you're trying to force the turbo to spin too quickly? By using a turbine speed sensor, uh, many ECUs now, uh, sorry, many turbos now have these uh, points machined into them. So it's just a case of fitting a sensor, connecting to that ECU, and making a quick calibration for that. You can data log your engine RPM versus manifold pressure versus turbine inlet pressure versus turbine speed. Now you're really talking. By using all these pieces of data, you'll be able to establish exactly what and where if you have any uh, issues or where you can gain any improvements. By taking all this data together, it puts you in a much greater position than anyone else who isn't doing this, especially if you're competitively racing, uh, drag racing, track racing, or anything like that, in order to optimize your car and the power range and to get you going as quickly as possible, as fast as you possibly can. So there's a quick overview of choosing a turbo um, for your engine. If you found this interesting, please click like. If you have any questions, please ask them below. And of course, subscribe to our channel for more updates in the future.